So yeah, my talk is model predictive control that JL advanced process control made easy using jump. I'm Francis, as mentioned, I work at Jumine. I would have loved to be Julia for the mine, but that's not for Julia, sadly. So it's for Jumeau, which mean, means twin in French. We build digital twins for the mining industry. Uh, short introduction, I'll start with a short introduction. After I'll present my methodology in the package, I'll first uh, review the modern control topology. You are probably not expert on process control, so I'll try to summarize that. And after, I'll talk about the available, available types in the package. I'll do two case studies if I have the time. Uh, maybe first one and I'll skip the second one. That's sad because that's the unstable system and it's cooler. But <laughs> so first one is continuously steer tank reactor, a really simple CSTR, classical chemical engineering problem, and inverted pendulum, which is a more mechanical system. And I'll show some benchmarks against MATLAB. So as an introduction, I'm asking the question, why Julia and Jam for model predictive control? There is an example over there of a, one of the most prestigious, I would say, uh, unit process of the mining industry, which is a flotation cells. It's at the end of the ore processing in which you, we use the hydrophobic nature of the ore to, uh, and we, we use air bubble in a liquid to uh, rise the, uh, the valuable product, and at the top there is all the valuable product, and we just take the fraud out to uh, do a concentrate of the ore. And this is a complicated process, so it's a cl classical application of advanced process control. So um, when it comes to process control design, most people will jump to MATLAB, pun, pun intended. <laughs> so yeah, uh, why? Because it's met the tools are mature, cohesive, uh, in a way that the optimization toolbox works well with the control toolbox, works well with all these stati statistical toolbox, and it's really well documented for sure. But as a drawback, for sure, it's closed source, uh, it's really expensive, we don't have the cash to buy a MATLAB license at, our, uh, at, our, at my jobs, and it can be slow because some part of it are purely interpreted. So model predictive control is the most widely used advanced process control approach. Uh, it's interesting because it can reduce, reduce wastes, so energy consumption, energy waste, or uh, raw material waste. I think it's one of the big challenge of our time. We should be more efficient in optimizing our plants. And there, there is some sector that use a lot of MPC, like the petrochemical sector, but the mining industry, for, for example, there's not a lot of uh, advanced process control. They use advanced process control for flotation, but uh, before flotation, where there is grinder milling, there's not a lot of advanced process control, and there is high gain in that, that we could gain on the energy consumption, for example. So MPC is in fact a kind of a real-time optimization. So the speed is fast, the, the speed is important for sure because we need to solve an optimization problem in real time. So when it comes to MATLAB, people will say it doesn't matter if it's slow, we'll use code generation. So we'll generate C code, but that's kind of the two language problem that you are probably aware of. If there is a part that is in C, you it will run in, as a compiled code. You cannot see what's happening inside. And it's in, it's in fact two versions of the code, the original code and the generated, to, generated code. So there can be difference between the two. And if we want to debug that, that's really hard. The, you, it's not, the read, readability is low. So yeah, that's a kind of a two language problem. And I think free and open source software is really interesting because for the accessibility, first reason, I think it's the big challenge of our time to make our plant more efficient, and these still need to be accessible. If we're thinking about MATLAB, yes, uh, it's, it, it can be expensive. There is specialized tool uh, in the process control field, the tool built by uh, automation hardware, a company like Rockwell, they are even more expensive. So when it comes to MPC, there is not a lot of free solution. And for research and development, that's cool because that's transparency, and trans transparency is one of the key aspects or of R&D. So why Julia and Jump? For sure, Julia, it's fast, it's expressive, and it's math-oriented. 
three aspects important for MPC. And jump, I think we saw those keywords on all the slides almost. Solver independence, we love that. We all love that. We, we know that. And as a drawback, we know that it's a small community and ecosystem, but that's a bit why we are here today. We're trying to change that. So I'll start with an overview of the modern control topology. Most of them are built like that. We have our plant, the machine that we want to control. There will be first U, all the variable can be uh, vectors here, the manipulated, manipulated inputs, that the stuff that we can directly change on the plant. We have a direct control on that. And we would like to control indirectly the measured outputs, the variable that we uh, are measured and we will want to bring them at specific values. Sometimes there is also measure disturbance. It's for what is called feed forward action. When you have measurements of a disturbance that you know it will impact the plant, uh, we don't have a control on this disturbance, but we want to react before it will impact the plant. That's called feed forward action. So it's not an obligation, but it can be useful. Uh, we separate the problem in two problems, the state estimator and the controller. The state estimator will build the state estimate using the manipulated input and measured outputs. That's the whole feedback. The state estimator at each time step will create a vector x hat that will, uh, that all the information about the feedback, if there is modeling error, there will always be modeling errors. It's all, it all will be included in the estimated states. So no state estimator, there is no feedback. That's open loop control. If you want closed loop, we want the state estimator. And it will feed the estimate of the states to the controller. Now we have the, the controller is aware of what is the current state of the plan. So let's do the action. Where do we want to bring the measured output? So that's the set point of the outputs. R, Y, R for reference. And sometimes it's not common, but we can also uh, have uh, input set points. I won't talk much about that. So most controllers are built like that. Here in the package, it's predictive controller. In the package, there is a composition relation between the three blocks. So each predictive controller object will include a state estimator object that will include a sim model object, a simulation model of the plant. So the types in the package, first abstract type is sim model for simulation model. There is two uh, kind of concrete type uh, for that. First is linear model, so it's the state space description of the plant. Most of the time it comes from system identification. That's in fact a regression, but applied for dynamical system. You just use input output data and you, we try to find an equation uh, with the data. So that's regression as a, but for dynamical system. And we'll, it will create uh, five matrices. So you just give the five matrices to the constructor and that's it. Uh, so that's more for, more for empirical model. Most first principle model, model based on physics, will be nonlinear ordinary differential equation system. So you will create the system by using, by, by creating the F and H function. It's normal Julia function. You just need to build it. I'll try to give an example of that. So quite similar, you just give the F and H function to the constructor and that's it. After, you will need to create your state estimator. I won't talk much about them. There is seven concrete type right now in the package. All the Kalman vector are classical one. There is default state estimator for each kind of predictive controller. Uh, so when it's a linear uh, MPC, the default is steady Kalman, steady Kalman filter. That's the same default as MATLAB. And uh, when it's a nonlinear MPC, the default will be uncentered Kalman filter. That's an approach for nonlinear system. I'll talk quickly about moving horizon estimator. That's a cool feature in my point of view because it's exclusive compared to MATLAB. There is no moving horizon estimator in the built-in toolbox of MATLAB. So and another cool aspect, it's the analog of MPC, but for state estimation. That's the same problem, but transpose for state estimation. So it will estimate a state for, shing, for sure, but using optimization under constraint. So the uh, exclusive fact about MHE is we can add constraint because it's based on optimization. And for sure, that, that's the only state estimator that use jump. That's, that's also why I'm talking about MHE uh, today. 
So similarly to MPC, as you will see, there is also the concept of horizon. Here is the our estimation horizon. It's how many time step in the past we are looking, how many measurements in the past we are taking to compute our current plant state estimate, est state estimate of the plant. Uh, for Lin model, it gives a quadratic, quadratic programming. I use osqp.jl uh, by default. It's a fast and modern uh, quadratic programming solver based on operator splitting. And for nonlinear model, for sure nonlinear programming, and I use IPOPT by default. Predictive controller abstract type. I talk quickly about linear MPC and nonlinear MPC. I won't talk about explicit MPC. We don't need jump for uh, explicit MPC. So uh, linear MPC, quickly, uh, MPC is based on doing prediction, repeated prediction and optimization in real time. There is always a concept of prediction horizon, HP. How many time step in the future we are looking to compute the prediction? And most of the time, there are also the control horizon concept is how many control move we allow in the future. If uh, HC is two, we will allow two moves in the future to change on the manipulated inputs. And after, the manipulated inputs will be constant. You, it's a constraint, uh, an equality, equality constraint. So at each time step, we will minimize an optimization problem. The most important, there will be four terms. The most important term is the first one. As you can see, the decision variable here are in delta u, so the change in the manipulated inputs. And the first term is the output set point tracking. That's a quadratic form here. So it's just, we're just minimizing the distance between the set points where we want to go and the prediction of the outputs. So by minimizi minimizing this term, we're trying to bring the prediction of the output on the set points. And there is always weighting matrix M here to change the importance of each outputs if there is multiple outputs. There is also most of the time move suppression terms where you, you're asking, well, do that, but do not make big change on the manipulated input because big change mean, means aggressive controller and aggressive controller is not desired in most practical uh, application. Sometimes there is input set point tracking. Uh, I won't talk much, much about that. And the last term is for constraint relaxation. There is also a uh, last term to, we want to avoid infeasible problem. What, the constraint are important, but it's even worse to have an infeasible problem. So there is a term that say, okay, don't, do not try to, uh, do not try to violate the constraint, but if you, do, you have no, no other choice, let's violate the constraint. Two minutes, okay. <laughs> so, and it's subject to the plan model, all the information that I shown of block diagrams, and uh, the input and the output uh, constraint that can be soft and hard, uh, soft or hard, and by default is OSQP. For nonlinear non MPC, similar as linear MPC, but now nonlinear models are supported. And uh, there is an additional term for the economical cost. It can be anything. It's a user-defined function. So the use user say, OK, here's a function related to the cash. Here's a function related to the energy consumption, et cetera. And by default, IPOPT. So case studies, I'll start with a CSTR. Classical example here is really simple. Similar to a bathtub, we have control of the hot a hot water valve and a cold water valve. We would like to control the water temperature and the water level in the tank. Uh, so the manipulated input uh, and the measured output level and temperature. And here we uh, extract a transfer function model. It's a transfer matrix, as a matter of fact. So it can be extracted using system identification, for example. So quickly on the synt syntax, you just build the TF matrix using the control systems uh, toolbox. So it's almost a copy pass of the equation. And you give that to the Lin model constructor. We're saying two seconds is the sampling time, the control period. And after we build a controller saying, OK, there is a constraint on the level. It shouldn't go below 45% the level. We add this constraint. constraint. Uh, we build a test function, a function that we will test MPC on our simulated plant. I initialize some variable. And after, it's only a for loop, so I just a loop on at the first third of the, of the simulation, I do a set point change. I change the set point for the um, level and the temperature. 
And at the second third of the simulation, I do a disturbance. I, I simulate a disturbance on the hot water valve. After, uh, all the objects are callable. So you can call the, the model to have the outputs, the, the simulation. We will simulate the, the plant. And we can call the MPC object to solve the optimization problem. It will call optimize function of jump, and it will return the current manip manipulated input for the current time steps. And after there is the update state for the state estimator. State estimator, we return a value, we call the function, and we put that in a simple object for plotting purposes. So here's the result, it works well. So uh, we have at the left the set points versus the uh, simulated output. So at the set point change in the first third, the, uh, the all the variables are tracked correctly, and there is the um, load disturbance also. There is some constraint violation on the level. As you can see, I won't enter into detail how to avoid constraint violation. There is some detail on the online documentation. Inverted pendulum, I won't enter into much detail. That's a simple example. It's a cool example because it's an unstable system. So it's, uh, it gives a uh, ill condition problem. So it's harder for IPOPT. So the, the, the system is unstable when it's like that. When it's like that, it's at rest, but uh, it's a stable system. So it's really similar. We just give the ODE system. We have a control on the torque. We want to control, we, we have the, we can change the torque. We want to control the angular position. So we just build a system. Uh, after we construct a controller, it's quite, kind of similar. We just build the F and H function that I shown on the first slide. And we give the F and H function. H is for the output uh, function. Here I'm converting radian to degrees in the output function. Uh, and the constraint, we cannot put a constraint uh, under uh, minus 1.5 torque and uh, over uh, 1.5, 1.5 uh, Newton meter of the torque. And classical change of we're from, we're at rest, we want to go to 180 and it works well and the constraints are not violated. Quick example of, we can have the economical cost. Here the economical cost, I put uh, the work done by the motor. So small gain in the energy consumption because of this specific example, there is not many gains that can be achieved. You can see the, the outputs, the inputs, the torque is quite similar, but there is a little gain on the ener energy consumption. Can be interesting in some application. In the mining field, there is some application that the en energy consumption is so huge that 1% energy consumption gain can be really interesting. <laughs> Benchmarks against Mat MATLAB, it's about 10 times faster for the uh, linear part. It's a bit related to OSQP, it's way faster than the equivalent in MATLAB. I did not use OSQP in MATLAB, I used their operator splitting uh, solver. So it's about 10 times faster. For nonlinear MPC, it's about twice faster using IPOPT and interior point in MATLAB. Uh, SQP, I used uh, Nitro, SQP and Julia, and the SQP in MATLAB, about also 10 times faster. Uh, two, two, uh, two time faster. To conclude, Julia Jump are powerful combination for MPC. Uh, case studies show the simplicity and flexibility of the package. There is benchmarks that show the great performance of the toolbox. There is still, there is probably some gain that could be uh, done on that, but that's the first iteration. And a future control project at Germain may use a package. It depends if we have the flexibility to use any tool that we want. Sometimes there is constraint on that. And that's it for me today. So thank you uh, for your listening. I'm here to answer your question. <laughs>